For those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Kaylee Reed, and I'm recovering from an eating disorder. My name is Kyle, uh, Kyle McNevin, and I live with anxiety, ADHD, and depression. Uh, but more than that, we're the co-founders of Wear Your Label, um, CEO. Chief Stigma Officer. <laughs> And what we do at Wear Your Label is create positive products um, that encourage people to create conversations about mental health and raise awareness, as well as giving back 10% of our profits to different mental health organizations. So two years ago, Kyle and I met uh, while working at a local mental health organization in Fredericton. We were both two university students at the time. And I hadn't been open about my personal experiences with um, my eating disorder. But I met Kyle, and he was someone who was very open about his experiences. I remember when we first met, he talked about going to therapy and some of the things that he did to, to feel better on a daily basis. And we had this really meaningful conversation and realized that those kind of conversations about mental health are pretty rare. Um, at the time, I hadn't told my family or my friends about my eating disorder. And we had this idea that we thought maybe could bring that conversation to more people. And like literally what it says on the slide we, <laughs> we talked about. And that was our first idea. Let's put words like depression and anorexia on t-shirts, raise a little money and a lot of awareness around mental health. And we pitched that idea at Unleash the Noise, which is now jack.org, or Jack Summit. And like Eric still probably has, you know, those cards that say depressed or anorexic in like the tacky gold lettering that we made on Microsoft Word. Um, and it was such a bad idea, right? Like it was, a, it was horrible. Like, not, so we had a lot of passion and we had a lot of enthusiasm around what we wanted to do. We wanted to help, right? We wanted to be something that made an impact and made a difference and, you know, the people at Jack and the, uh, a lot of our mentors were like, whoa, slow down, you know? People who already wear their label, regardless of their clothing, they go, you know, I don't need a shirt that tells me I'm depressed. I know I'm depressed. I know more than anyone else. I need something that reminds me that, I'm, that, that my mental health and my mental illness doesn't have power over me. I have power over my mental health or mental illness. So we now kind of, did a huge pivot, right? So Yeah, we, we did a really big pivot from that original idea that we pitched at Jack Summit two years ago. And I think um, something that's important to keep in mind, I mean, there's so many amazing ideas and initiatives that are coming out of this weekend, but something to keep in mind is that that original idea might change and it might become better or, you know, you might hear something that could um, add to this initiative that you've already come up with. And I think being flexible to that change and being open to making those pivots is really what can make something really successful. Absolutely. And so today, you know, we create positive products around uh, conversations and visibility for mental health. And we'll, we'll get into all the, the fun stuff about that. But moreover, we kind of wanted to address uh, a little bit of our thinking and, and, and why we do what we do and, and to so yeah, next. and we uh, we kept the name Wear Your Label because to us it was more about this philosophy of taking ownership over those struggles and realizing that they don't define who you are. So your label might be a part of you, but it's not all of you. So we kept the name Wear Your Label, and we keep that concept and that philosophy with everything that we do today. Um, but the problem that we we're trying to address has has been the same since day one, and it's that stigma and that invisibility around this issue of mental illness. Um, when you walk down the street, you can't really tell who might be struggling with a mental health challenge. Mental illness doesn't discriminate based on your race or your age or your gender or even your socioeconomic status. Um, anybody could be struggling with anything at any point in time, and it's really difficult to, to know what somebody might be going through without talking to them. But how do we create those conversations? Um, so for Kyle and I, we were both really passionate about fashion, and we thought, why not try to start these conversations with the clothing that we wear every single day? Totally. And, you know, we don't exist alone. So mental health and the stigma surrounding mental illness are very, very 
uh, broad and overarching. It's not gonna, like, we don't think that we are a replacement or advocate that we are a replacement for mental health, clinical uh, uh, care, prescription medication, or talk therapy. But what we do say is, you know, we're, we're a, foot, uh, a foot in the door or, a, or a, the start of a conversation uh, for you to get the appropriate help that you need and, and for you to feel safe and, and support. So when we, talk, we talked a lot about this in our last workshop is that, you know, mental illness is an invisible illness, right? And oftentimes when you can't see something, you have a really hard time understanding it. And when you can't understand something, we often make predispositions, judge, and, and stigmatize it. So, you know, how can, we, how can we change that? How can we make that better? And how can we bring that into the light? Well, obviously for kick-ass conferences like this is a really good start. And it's an amazing to bring this many people together to talk, but how do we, how do we continue to bring that into our everyday lives and, and continue to, to do that? So we, we decided to use fashion as our medium, right? You know, walking fashion statements, right? The fact that our shirts have positive messages that, you know, like make people stop and think. So we try and emulate, like we mentioned earlier, to be that cast, right? To be that symbol that, you know, I'm healing or I'm getting better uh, for mental, mental illness. Yeah, and we design things twofold. So the first idea in the design process is how can we make this a conversation starter? So that if you see it or you see somebody wearing it, it kind of sparks that initial conversation of like, oh, what does that mean? And that person has the opportunity to then share their personal story. Um, but we also design things to be a personal reminder of hope for the wearer. So we try to incorporate a lot of little details into the brand um, that we'll get into, but... Go ahead. Yeah, like tags that take care of yourself. Everyone here is where... Uh, so we did the, the conference shirts, right? So the, the tags on your shirts are written by Dr. Joan Wright, and they're uh, ways that you can uh, take care of yourself, right? So stretch your breathing muscles. To inhale, exhale, meditate, feel your feet, be present, listen to an awesome song. Um, and some of the things that we wanted to do when we kind of made this brand shift as well was incorporate more of the five and five. So you've probably heard it this weekend, one in five Canadians will experience a mental health challenge during their lifetime, but five and five have mental health. And so with our original idea of where your label was very focused on the one in five and people physically wearing their labels, um, but what we realized is that doesn't really start the conversations that we need. What we need is to have everybody, whether or not you're personally affected, to be having these conversations, to be thinking about the way that your language impacts other people, to be thinking about the kind of support systems that we need to have in place to really make this issue um, less detrimental to, to society right now, really. Um, so we've been trying to kind of emulate this brand that is not just for people who are personally suffering, but anybody, because at the end of the day, we all have mental health and we all need to take care of it. So yeah, uh, moving, oh, next slide too, actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So we, we, we're two kids from New Brunswick, right? 23, 22. Um, we started this company with no background in fashion, and, well, some, like not, not so much this guy. Um, uh, and we had this really great idea. And, you know, through our mentors and going through different business accelerators, we started to grow slowly. But it wasn't until uh, this one moment in May that we got picked up, and we call it the BuzzFeed era, um, because it really ch it transformed the way our company is and, and how we grew. So one day, uh, today, uh, today.com reached out and they said, look, we'd like, like to feature you. And then after that, I think there was about 25 other news sites and international uh, media and press that picked us up. And in May, we were about to, to launch this Kickstarter campaign. And uh, you know, in two days, we, we reached our fundraising goal without even having to do the campaign because of the traffic and sales we got from the, from the press, which is fantastic. But you know, coming from five orders a day a week to 500 is a very, like, real adult business now. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we used to screen, we screen printed every garment by hand. You know, Kaylee would sew on the labels, and you know that no longer was feasible. Like, I remember days when we were pumping out like until 2 a.m. trying to get these orders out, and uh, and it wasn't just sales; it was the eyes on the company. So, you know, we had. 
people reach out for stories, uh, for uh, relationships, conversations, uh, different businesses and nonprofits wanted to volunteer with us. The organizations ac all across North America that we looked up to are now wanting to work with us. So it's, it was this transformational time for us because you know, we really, really wanted something to happen and we didn't expect this at all uh, to, to, to go so quickly, so. And it was really amazing learning experience too. Um, like Kyle said, neither of us has a background in fashion really, neither of us has a background running a business. Um, so we learned a lot along the way and I think that that's a little bit underrated. Like I think sometimes you see a successful campaign or a successful business or something that you really admire and then you think, whoa, like how would I even start something like that? Like where do I even begin? And for us, it really started so small and with so many little things and little steps that we continue to build upon um, that we just taught ourselves or that we reached out to mentors for help or advisors. And that's really how we grew very slowly. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like things kind of happened overnight. But the reality is that there's no such thing as an overnight success. There was months and months of so much hard work that we put in beforehand, before anybody really started to take notice or really started to what seemed like care about what we were doing. And for a long time, it was really frustrating because we felt like we were putting our hearts and souls into this business and this idea that we knew could be really meaningful, but nobody was taking notice. And it took a lot of time, but finally when that domino effect kind of started to happen, um, we really saw the impact that we could have and the conversations that we could start creating, which is really amazing. And something that has been really important to us too is not only sharing our story, which we're really fortunate to be able to do a lot, um, but putting the conversation in the hands of you guys or in the hands of our customers or our role models. Um, because at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's really not about what Kyle and I has gone through. It's not about building where your label. It's about giving people the tools and the confidence to start their own conversations. And so by providing these opportunities like our role model campaign or um, our new with love campaign that we just launched, we're really trying to help other people share their own stories um, because that's what makes the biggest impact is when we are all having these conversations, not just us up here. <laughs> And so at the end of the day, I mean, we, we sit back and we look at this amazing thing that we've created um, and it's sometimes really overwhelming. Um, running a business when you have a mental illness is really intense. And especially in startup mode because things are unpredictable and things get hectic and sometimes you have zero clue what you're doing and no idea how to take the next step. Um, and we've found some amazing ways to kind of support each other and support ourselves through self-care and really taking care of our personal mental health before the brand. Because I think something that is underrated is helping yourself before you help others. I mean, in this room, there's 200 people who all want to make a change and who all want to do something to help people who might be struggling. But I think it's really important for us to reflect and make sure that we're doing okay, too. Because if you only help one person and you only help yourself, that's still a really amazing accomplishment. So thank you so much for allowing us to come and talk. And we'll be here for a little bit longer. but. Uh, continue to have these conversations and continue the work that you're doing. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for, for being here.